Hey everyone, welcome back to week five. So today we're gonna learn all about herbs, something that doesn't get quite as talked about compared to fruits and vegetables. There's fruits, there's vegetables, and there's herbs in your garden. So we're gonna talk a little bit about herbs and then we're gonna do a really fun activity that I'm sure you're ready to get to. So herbs are the things that you find in your garden that have a lot of fragrance and they smell really good and then can be added to your food for a little bit of flavor. They can be grown in pots, they can be grown in the garden, um, right in the ground bed, or they can be grown in um, you know, planter boxes. They grow real well in Iowa in different kinds of settings. So there are perennials and there are annual um, herbs. You just have to read the tag to see which one you have. So perennials um, are something that grow back each year. In annuals, you have to replant each year. So there's two kinds of different kinds of herbs out there. So make sure you read your tag should you um, plant herbs in the future to know if you have a perennial or the annual. So if you have something that's going to grow back each year, make sure you allow for it to grow big each year and for it to keep coming back um, so know that space is always taken up by those herbs. Um, so a little bit about harvesting herbs. It's best to harvest your herbs from your garden in the morning when um, the sprigs of your herbs are at its freshest and they'll have the best flavor and the best um, fragrance before they flower as well. So most herbs eventually go to flower and they have lo lovely beautiful blooms but um, you should try to pluck off those blooms um, while you're in the stages of harvesting that way so it's at its freshest and then when you're ready um, to be done harvesting them allow them to go to bloom especially if they're uh, perennial so it can um, get ready to come back next year. Um, a little bit about preserving herbs. You can keep herbs from year to um, after you've um, picked them from your herb bushes and you could, there's different ways you can um, preserve them or store them. Um, each herb is going to be a little bit different, so make sure you do your, re your research, but you can put them in some airtight containers, um, like some Tupperware containers with some, some lids. Um, you can dry them um, and turn them into a powder, some of them, um, to put back into your cooking. And then there are some of them that work best by freezing. You can freeze um, basil to put back into your cooking. So if you plan to keep your um, herbs into the fall and into the winter, make sure you do your research to find out the best way that you should keep your herbs after you have um, harvested them. So there are several good herbs that are good to plant here in Iowa. So I'll name you a few of them because there are several. So if you're looking to get some herbs in your garden, uh, maybe your parent or your garden can take you down to um, one of the flower shops here in town and get some herbs. So here's some good ones for you to think about planting. Um, basil, and that's an annual, so you'll have to plant that from year to year. Chives, they grow back, they're a perennial. Um, cilantro is an annual, however, they do go to seed at the end of the um, fall and they do end up coming back. So it's like a whole new fresh set of leaves are coming back from year to year. So if you plant cilantro and um, don't want it to maybe come back in the same spot, plant that in a pot. Um, dill is one of them. That's an annual that can reseed like cilantro. So if you don't want it to come back in the same spot, make sure you plant it in a pot. Um, fennel is one of them, also like the dill and the cilantro. Mint is a perennial, so it just keeps coming back from year to year. You cut it down in the fall, um, and then it regrows in the spring. Oregano, that's a perennial. Parsley is a biannual, so it only lasts two seasons, and then you'll have to um, replant it. Uh, but that's a kind of a tender perennial, so you may have a hard time keeping that one and bringing it back, so you may want to put that in a pot and bring it inside. Kind of just depends on where you grow it. Um, rosemary, that's a perennial. Sage, that's a perennial. And then thyme, that is a perennial as well. So a lot of good herbs. If you want more information on these, um, Iowa State Extension Not Reach always has information on herbs, vegetables, and fruits. You can do some research on uh, the Iowa State Extension Not Reach. Um, website or feel free to contact the office and we can get you some more information on how to grow it or even maybe how to preserve it. 
So we are going to get started with our experiment or our activity. So you should have a kit that's got flour, salt, um, and a herb. Um, the only thing you need to get from your home is water and it needs to be warm. So make sure you have all of your supplies ready to go and then meet me back here. Okay, so hopefully you have all of your supplies ready. Um, make sure you have a bowl and something maybe to work on top of if you don't have a tabletop um, and have your water ready. So this is a half a cup of warm water. Make sure that it's warm. Um, we're gonna start by adding um, only about half of it. Um, we're gonna slowly incorporate it so we don't make a big mess, but to also make sure that we actually need all the water. Depending on the moisture that you have in your house, you may not need it all or you may need more. So I did grab a little bit extra to be on reserve. So know that you may have to add a little bit extra depending on how it goes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've got the flour and my salt mixture and my lavender. Here's my big bulk bag of lavender. So lavender grows um, little flower pods. You can see kind of they're like little seed pods. Um, and this is something that is both edible and used for fragrance. A lot of people use them in essential oils. It's a very calming um, herb. So that's what we're going to use today. I already have some of my herbs in. You can start by adding your herbs in the flour and the salt, incorporating it, and then adding your water. So we're going to create a little hole in my Play-Doh, and we're going to add a little bit in, and we're going to mix and then we're gonna just keep doing that. We're gonna add a little bit and then we're gonna mix. So let's see how this goes. You can also start by adding just a little bit of your um, herbs in at a time, especially if you're afraid of it being too overpowering of a scent. I understand that. So you may wanna add just a little bit of lavender at a time. You can always incorporate back in when you play with it. Some other options that were on your instructions that you should have received in your kit was that you can add glitter, you could add food coloring, or any other objects to your Play-Doh um, for maybe some sensory, like some beads. Um, if you do add food coloring, know that it will, you know, semi-permanently stain your hands. So make sure you either are wearing gloves or you're using your spoon to mix that in. Could also use essential oil to help um, give the uh, Play-Doh a little bit more of a scent. If you have essential lavender essential oils, feel free to put that in. Just make sure you ask a parent or a guardian um, to help you with that because some people can be sensitive to essential oils. Okay, we're going pretty good. I'm on my last leg of half of my half a cup, so I did end up using all of that. And it may be that once you get towards the end of the mixing, you may have to get your fingers in there and mix it up. Okay, so I am thinking it's a good thing that I added just a little bit extra water on reserve. So I'm gonna dump just the tiniest bit in there. I'm gonna mix that in, and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and mix it with my fingers. So don't be afraid to get messy with this recipe. All right, we're gonna go in. You could add food coloring in a couple different ways. You could add it in now while you're mixing, or you could always experiment with adding it to the water. That would work as well. Okay, so I've got it mostly mixed up. I have a little bit of extra powder on the bottom of my bowl, but that is okay. I'm gonna knead it a little bit. So if you do add food coloring, um, know that um, after you get it well incorporated in, um, the Play-Doh will no longer um, stain hands. You just gotta have to get it well incorporated in. 
And also, if, you, if you're if you doing this activity and you find, oh man, we might have added a little bit too much water, that is okay. It's just regular flour and salt. So feel free to go back and add just a little bit more flour and salt to your recipe. I'm just going to go ahead and soak up the rest of this flour that's sitting on the bottom and I'm going to incorporate it in. Otherwise, that is just about done. I've got Play-Doh. You could start using it and start playing with it. So the good thing about this Play-Doh is it's got herbs, so it should smell nice like the um, the lavender. Some of the lavenders fell out in my bowl, so I'm gonna add those back in. But like I said, feel free to use essential oils if someone has essential oils in your household to make it um, smell a little bit more fragrant. But also you can try this at your home with other herbs laying around your house as well. Or if you decide to grow herbs in the summer, you can get them straight out of your, your um, garden and I'm add them back into your Play-Doh. So there is the Play-Doh activity. I hope you guys have fun playing with your Play-Doh and smelling the wonderful smell of lavender. Lavender smells very good. So hope you had fun this week and I'll see you back here for one more week. Bye guys.